Well, you know, somebody said in one of the comments when I posted petrified fish knives, especially this monster, it's kind of a monster. It's not as big as you'd think, but it, it looks and feels like it. And this is the Baluga, okay, the PF P01 Nashorn knives design. This is his first design, really great. Uh, but they were saying, ah, oh, they're monsters. I mean, something more EDCable. It'd be nice if petrified fish would make. Okay, okay. So, what do you think? The 858, 858. What do you think? D2 blade, uh, smaller knife, definitely lighter, liner lock. Orange and black G10, David Chen design, by the way. Huh? What do you think about that? Now, how big is the old boy? Well, it's three and an eighth. So, three point, what, one five, something like that blade, and seven and a quarter overall length. Jeez, come on. 80 millimeters on the blade length and 18 and a half centimeters overall length. There's the box. So, yes, you can get these. Yes, you can get them on White Mountain Knives. Yes, you can use LTK discount code to get 10% off. Yes, they make a lot of different models. You know, so uh, there's a lot going on with Petrified Fish. And yes, every time we've tested the steel, whether it's D2, Buller K110, M390, like on that little bottle opener titanium fish. Where the hell did that go? Um, yes, that was M392. So they've always tested, uh, as stated, there's the liners they show, so they're not nested in here. They didn't really skeletonize them, but who gives a crap, right? Because get this, this is not a very heavy knife. Two point, it's under three ounces. Is that light enough for you? Is it? Um, 84 grams. Come on, man. That's pretty light. Oh, by the way, how fat is the handle? Do you care? I know I do. 0.47, it's like the paramilitary too. 11.9 millimeters and the blade thickness basically three millimeters at 0.12 of an inch bl uh, blade width. So, um, is that a recurve? It's kind of, I don't know that that would be tough to sharpen uh, because I don't know if I really, uh, let me see. Well, nah, it just goes and then it's got belly here and tip here. So I don't know that, yeah, I don't think that's going to be an issue with my sharpening system, regardless. Got this kind of swedge going along here. It kind of keeps the tip from being too fragile and small. Uh, yeah, kind of nice design. Ergos seem fine. Not I can get all my fingers on here. Where's my balance? My balance point's here. Uh, you've got jimping on your liner so you can disengage. It'll drop. It gets over the detent ball pretty quick. It's got a nice little drop to it. Um, blade to handle length. Uh, well, I mean, you got this pass through here. Let me pop this open. Okay, you're kind of doing this. Uh, you're not bad. You're not bad. I, maybe they could have stuffed a little bit more blade in there. It's centered. No blade play, no lock rock. I don't think I've had a difficult time taking any or apart or re, you know, reassembling. So, okay. The hardware is nothing to write home about, is it? Nah. Um, this is not bad. Okay. And then their little logo on the front. That's okay. But here... Uh, you know, just your little cap screw type things, whatever they are. Uh, and it's deep carry, right hand only, because left hand people are not important at all. Ah, so, yeah, interesting. Um, uh, you know, for a knife that's no more expensive than this, hmm, maybe they should have done a left hand option, especially a more gent carry type. 
And where was this? Uh, $28.99. Oh, yeah, I got mine on Amazon because that was before... I got mine before uh, White Mountain Knives had them in stock. So $28.99. Okay? I mean, and you don't have to get the orange, by the way. Okay, come here, blue. And, uh, yes. Looks a lot smaller than the paramilitary, too. So, like I said, this is how to be very EDCable. Really, the design looks pretty attractive to me. Uh, fit and finish on these PF knives is good. It's as good as anything I can think of. I mean, maybe I'm not as particular as some people are, but, uh, you know, you put a Civivi or a CR, C, CJRB knife or a Kaiser, you know, Vanguard series or whatever in my hands and... I don't know that I can appreciate that much of a difference, if any at all, okay? So, hmm, it seems, seems pretty reasonable. Let me see if it'll cut anything. Okay, there's that. It made short work of that. Yeah, I mean, I don't know if I'd say it's scary sharp, but it's good factory edge, that's for sure, so always be tuned up if you want to but i mean that that yeah that'll get you down the road for a while pocket clip i carried it once or twice it it went over the lip of my pocket i mean it's not that difficult right it's pretty springy and at least it's deep carry so if you want a discreet carry i mean we're talking ganzo knife prices here 28 bucks seriously so um, and it, I, I can guarantee is D2. We've tested enough of them. Um, bearings on here, we'll take it apart because I don't know if they got ceramic bearings on this or regular steel bearings. Uh, so that'll be interesting to check. Uh, but the liners, I mean, they're well rounded, they're smooth. I mean, I've felt knives that had, um, that had kind of edginess on these liners. Let me see if I can touch. Can I touch the back of that blade? Um, I can touch. Yeah, I was looking down through off the camera, but yes, I can touch that blade. Hold on, let me see. If I, yeah, right here I can. If I dig down there hard enough, let me see if I can feel it come up on me. Yeah, I can. I can feel that right there. And that's part of the reason why I like uh, backspacers on knives, because that eliminates most of that potential. But, <clears throat> I mean, if the backspacer went out to here, it still wouldn't get rid of that, although they may have to give clearance for that. But, you know, they got clearance here, and the blade shape itself, with that big belly on it, I think that's what's putting it right there. Yeah, I can, I can feel it, although I ran my finger up and down there and pushed, and I didn't make enough contact to cut myself. But it's going to be possible to do that. Uh, it will be possible. You got a lanyard hole there. You got really good... Um, traction on this G10. Got a lot of texturing, so that's good too. Detent, it's it's about where it needs to be. Um, because, and yeah, I tried to, tried to fail it. No, nah, no, nah, nah, that didn't work. No, nope, that didn't work either. Yeah, it's about right. I mean, it's not like you have a fuller here where you can finger flake it or you got thumb studs or anything. So you can make the detent a little bit tougher it's jimped here, but this is this is rounded well enough. You know, not overly done because it's not stone washed or bead blasted, but okay, it, it's it's sufficient. Uh, so yeah, I mean uh, the detent is is just fine. Yeah, um, even a beginner might not be able to fail this. So wow, okay. The design flow looks good. I mean, this melts into the bolster here. This disappears. The blade hardly uh, appears at all here, except for in that area. Well, let's uh, pop it open 
And, ooh, baby, you don't want to come too, too easily. But, you know, this side on here, it turned a little bit and then stopped, which means that there's probably a flat spot in there that holds it so that you cannot spin this pivot, which is great. I, I like when they do that, especially if they're not going to give you any way to get in on this side. So let's, uh, we got to take this screw out because this is going all the way through and into that standoff, I believe. And then this goes into the liner here. So are we good? Are we clear? Yeah, same size. Hold on. So they probably just both go into the liner. And that's it. Uh, here's your body screw. And... Um, let me see. Where am I? Okay. I don't know. I didn't take that from the back side for some reason. I took it from the front. Like I was saying, I wasn't wasn't bragging about the hardware. It just looks like standard fare. Um, okay, let's take the little plastic wedge and kick this off. Come on. You want to hold on dearly, don't you? Okay, come on. There we go. No, no ceramic bearings. Okay. But, you know, Ganzo prices, I don't expect it. And there's the lube. And there's the pivot. And yes, there's a flat spot on the pivot. And there's the bearings on the other side. And it looks pretty clean. It's got some lube here, of course. But there's your... There's your bearings. Okay. There's the other side. And that's fine, too. And it looks like a flat spot there where that pivot goes through. And the pivot is flattened at the end where it goes the opposite side. Alrighty, time to reassemble. And uh, Petrified Fish logo goes in. So this is going to be locked down to a certain way that this is going to have to come through here. So uh, we're good there. Otherwise, it spins all the way around here. But the flat spot is at the very end where it hooks up on the other side. Let's put bearings on here. And let's put a little bit of lube and a blade and bearings and lube. Um, and I'm supposed to be, okay, that's good position for that. Right there. Just a little, and put this on top. And let's see if that sits it down on there right. Uh, may have that a little out of position. Come here. Nope, not that much. Maybe right there. Looks good. Let's put this on here and lock down this pivot with the number eight. Get this squared up. Yeah, there was some uh, thread lock or something in, in this pivot area. I'm kind of working a little bit of it out here. Okay. Well, that's enough pressure on that, I'd say. 
let's get this body screw from this side put back in because we weren't moving the one on the other side efficiently might be because my number six tines on this driver are not all that good a shape might have been spinning around in there but that's that's tight down now and God, that's why I like number eights on the body screws for sure. This one as well. Okay, that's tight. That's tight. And let's retighten this one. Now I think I probably got my pivot locked down a little too hard. Oh, God, yeah. Hell, yeah. I really cranked down on that puppy. Okay, let's break it open a bit. Oh, that's much better. Hold on, let's realign this uh, logo. Okay. Now let's see where we are. Play, no. Drop, good, centered, yes. Okay, that's really nice now. Really nice little drop to it. Okay, we're good. Back with the PF858 Petrified Fish. Interesting. Ganzo Price knife. Uh, very lightweight. Under three ounces. Basically a three and a seven knife. And it's three and an eighth inch blade with seven and a quarter overall but yeah this is definitely a deep carry gent budget you know knife that you can use i'm gonna leave you to it my friends thank you so much for hanging out we do love them knives so you guys stay sharp